Now, let's go ahead and get into our underdog token for the day. And just to kind of circle this one up, because it floated across my desk on a couple of occasions, mostly through social media, and I have not given any attention to it, not because I don't think it's a good project, just it's not for my investment strategy worth the time. But I think it's I think it's fair to at least give it some attention and exposure because you might, based on the explanation or the review, find that it works for you. It just doesn't work for me. This one's called Apollo Inu. Apollo Inu token.com. Apollo Inu is currently on the Ethereum chain. That means Uniswap for you. When I looked at this one, as and it resonates because it fits my one of my industries. So I already saw why there's at least some attention on this dude. And I may at some point at least not invest in it, but support it in some way. But I had a couple of issues that came to surface. First of all, let me talk about high level. What they describe the Apollo Inu token as trying to do is to support content creators. I am a content creator. You know, the basic cryptonomics is content that we create, right? And we have a lot that we present to different platforms, including YouTube, as well as our podcast and Twitter. And this one talking about, we want to help them kind of break out. We want to help them get enough to where they can attract attention. And it's done by way of contests. And when you do a contest in how they build this, you would not, as a creator, you would nominate yourself and say, here's what we do. This is how we work. And then you would share this out across the platforms to say, hey, vote for us. Vote for what we do. Vote for our platform. Vote for our strategy. Anybody who holds a token can vote. The one thing I liked about their voting structure, if you went back to an older episode, I talked about EarnHub. And I mentioned that EarnHub was having issues, and they still are, but they were having issues with the fact that they had gotten breached And with the breach, somebody took a bunch of tokens that were sitting on them. And as a result, they're going to relaunch their token as any flect. Well, they were sending it out to the group because it's a DAO. So you have voting rights if you hold. And they said, you know, we don't want to use the DAO for this specific vote because if you, if they stole or stole rather these billions and billions of tokens, they're going to have the voting precedence. And what I said was at the time, you should be doing One wallet, one vote, because that gets around the problem. Then it doesn't matter. As long as you kept any token, one or one million, you have the equal balance. And so you you negate that. The problem is all DAOs have been built to support the idea that the more tokens you hold, the more strong your vote is compared to the other voters, which I felt was unfair. It basically talks about the way our electoral college works in the United States. That's fine, but I don't think that works in a system where all the investors should be equal. So Apollo, the nice thing they did is they said, no, every holder can only vote once and votes are equal as opposed to the normal way to do it in their DAO. They treat it like if you have a wallet, if you hold, regardless how much you hold, you have one vote. And they attributed this apparently to the wallet, which means you could have somebody who has like 10 wallets or 50 wallets, but building wallets is a pain. You could script it and then spin up a bunch of wallets and do all this elaborate stuff. I would argue that it's the vast majority of people not going to waste time doing that. So I like that. I love the fact that they did this. I'm not a fan of the popularity, nominate yourself popularity structure. I understand why they did it. I just think that there's a better way to have done that to where it's not the creator nominating themselves. You simply put content out there as a creator in some forum that they would build. And then from there, people that are holders can go to this thing and they can pick the content they like, and then they can add a vote. And we're not necessarily at this point saying that, you know, you could have 10 projects that you give a vote to each one of the 10 because you like all 10 of them. Great. What you're saying is I like all of these period where that starts to get sketchy is that you'd have to rotate the participants somehow. So let's say there's what I'm describing. If they're listening, I'll add them. What I'm describing is let's say that you have 500 creators on the platform within the 500 creators. Let's say you rotate five of them once a week and people are expected to come to the portal 
And these creators, we ask them to submit a work of some kind, whether that's a, an AMA they've done or a YouTube post they've done or a podcast episode they've done or artwork they've done or an NFT they've done, something that you have created that you would like to have somebody chime in and say, yes, we express interest. This is what we like. And you rotate this five. So every week there's a different five and no one project can ever be voted on more than once every two months or something. You do that and then people will apply their votes. And it's again, it's one wallet, one vote. But you can, if you want, you can vote for each project. So say you like all five, you can vote for all five with one thing. You express to the holders that what you'd like them to do is not just vote because you're trying to help them, Vote because you truly legitimately like the content and be genuine because that that vote is an expression of your appreciation of the content creator. So be honest about it. Just express that you want them to be honest about it. Then you tally it up and you determine of the five who got the greatest votes and you do a gold, bronze, silver type situation where there's always a of the five, there's always three winners, right? And if you've won before in a year, you can't win until the following year so that each person can only win once in a year. Like some creative way that it's not just me as a creator going in there, essentially begging for somebody to vote on my deal. I'm just a creator. I've logged myself as such. My content's made available. I identify the work that I want them to vote on, which I would have a pretty good candidate in mind. And they will vote or they won't. And then we go from there. I think that's a more randomized because you have to tie in randomization to it, but a more randomized, more fair, more diverse way, more, I hate the word, but inclusive way of making sure not only all creators get exposure without having to necessarily keep begging a sense. Um, I just don't think, I know why they did it this way. It's because when they do it to different social media platforms and spread the word, Hey, come vote for me on the, 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 you're also increasing exposure and awareness to Apollo. And so it's kind of self-marketing. You're banking on the marketing because they're influencers potentially. And as a creator, they would have followers, but also they might search for the information and then you might stumble across Apollo in you and then you might buy into it because you see the price and you like it. I got the marketing strategy of it. I understand why they did it that way. I'm just not a fan of that as opposed to doing it a little bit differently than the way I described it. Their roadmap, I'm very impressed with. They use a Trello board. If you don't know what Trello is, it's a tool used in technology development, but you can make it public. And what it does is you can bucket statuses. So you can say, you know, status one, status two, status three, or say, you know, in process, in development, pending, project management, whatever statuses you want. And then you can identify a card for each task. And it should be task driven, but a lot of people abuse it. Um, I don't, I, I like Trello for what it's supposed to do. I don't like it the way that it's generally used in IT. It should not replace a real project management tool, but I would be okay with it as a simple dashboard for end users to just understand what's going on in a simple form. At a high level, what are you really doing and what's the status of a certain thing? I like the fact that it's a Trello board as opposed to a flat roadmap because the Trello board you can see when things move, you can see who's working on things. So this goes to transparency of people as well. You can see who's assigned to different things. You can also see what things are done. And in project development, there's a concept of definition of done. Definition of done in a simple form simply says, how do we know that something is finished? Can we define what that means? And how do we know what that is? That's definition of done. So for example, let's say I'm building an application to order fast food. The definition of done should be something along the lines of a user can log into an application on their phone and they can sign up an account and they can order food with the credit card. That's the definition of done. Things like, well, it should be blue, should not fit in the definition of done. Things like it matches our brand standard should be. So having them in this form allows us as investors to see at a high level, which unfortunately leads to my first negative. This 
launch. I understand why it's a thing. I'm calling it as a negative and it's me and I don't care who disagrees. It's my opinion. This also shares to you what they are actively engaged with that's not development related, but also their outreach, how they are communicating, who they're communicating with and why. So they've done various AMAs and different social media engagements. And I was looking through the different Trellos and one of the topics I saw was award Jake gain stream giveaway winners. So this says that what they did is they did a stream with Jake again, and he is a influencer on social media. And as part of this, they did a giveaway. There's, I don't mind the giveaway at all. I do mind the fact that Jake again is involved because as we've seen with other tokens, often many of these don't really care about the project. Now in Jake's situation, the hope would be that he is involved as a creator and he's participating in the voting situation as a creator and was not just approached as a shill. That's the hope rather than, because what happens is if you have somebody who's just shilling it, generally it's somebody that doesn't really care about the project themselves. So what we saw was with Kim Kardashian, for example, she was shilling, literally shilling the Ethereum Max project to the point that it crapped and then it they got sued, Floyd Mayweather. So I'm not a supporter of the Schiller approach at all. If you're involved and invested in the ecosystem so that you are supportive of people who invest in it like them, you're one of them, I'm pretty much okay with that. If you're providing fundamentals and information, I'm pretty much okay with that. Where I have an issue is if all you're doing is shilling it with the intent being that it's going to trash or crap at some point. Now, this project, again, being on Ethereum, it's got uh, two trillion in supply. So its supply is actually very low, which is good. And it has contributed to a strong price movement. So from a general tokenomics perspective, I have no concerns if I just focus on the token now rather than the fundamentals of what they're trying to do. Cool. It seems like they've done a good job. However, I don't, their white paper, as they call it, which isn't really a white paper, but their white paper is very detailed in what they want to do and how they want to do it. The only negative I got on that one is it's stuck on that Git book, which I said, it's a good tool, but I don't want your white paper in a Git book. I want your white paper as a flat PDF so I can hold you accountable for changes that I don't expect to be made. It has a 3% reflections for you holding, 2% burn, which they say is to stabilize value. And just to be clear, those burn mechanics don't truly stabilize the value unless if you're doing a, you know, like a buyback and liquidity type thing, or you're burning to liquidity or you're doing something that's around liquidity because just burning is not going to stabilize the value at all. And then a 1% contribution that they say is to support up and coming creators. I don't know if that's true. However, because it's a DAO, in theory, they should not be allowed to do anything otherwise. Because the devs are still involved, it means that they could theoretically just do whatever with the money. Nothing would stop them from doing so. To their credit, they seem to have been reasonably transparent about what they're trying to do. And they seem to be out there and they seem to genuinely want to help people succeed. So I'm not criticizing the team. What I am saying is, number one, I don't want to see situations where we have something like the white paper on a get book and there's no flat PDF and, you know, there's no intent that I can see to do a utility. Like there's, it's something that it does, right? The supporting creators, I'm saying a utility, I described it, a tool that you go in, you submit your work and then it does the rotation of that. Something that's strong utility rather than banking on what I can clearly see is you're just wanting to leverage their social media exposure to increase awareness of the token. I understand it from an investor perspective, why that might make sense. I just don't support it. They say that it's audited by way of anti-fraud and it's a t- firm called Sokin, which I never heard of. I can look at it. I'm not going to, because I don't want to be biased by it because it's all GitHub. The fact that it's GitHub, I'm not a fan. I, I don't support it at all, but <laughs> there was a mention in the white paper that I, I think it's either now, listen, so I, I said it before, especially if you're on YouTube. I haven't said this on the podcast, but I've said it multiple times. I am a straight shooter in a world of sensitivity. 
and I don't apologize for this. I will call it like I see it. The goal, I think, of anybody who has a concern or challenge or problem or issue with anything I say is come on the show and I want the smoke and we can talk it out. I just talked about the Trello board and how in the Trello board, there's an entry that said there's a Jake again and we did a giveaway. I happen to know from other projects that Jake again charges for that service. However, in their white paper, quote unquote, it says, quote, no paid interviews or promotions. Apollo has never paid for advertising or interviews of any kind. This is a contradiction because this means that one of two things must be true. Either A, they're lying in the white paper, which makes me immediately distrust everything else. Or B, Jake again did his out of the, out of the kindness of his heart, which is incompatible with other experiences with him. So I'm not saying it is or isn't true. I'm saying we need to understand which one it is. Was, did he do this out of the kindness of his heart, which I strongly disbelieve? Or are you lying in your white paper? They might say, well, we just haven't updated it. That means I distrust everything in the white paper. And it's also the reason I want a PDF. Because you could just surreptitiously go and edit that dude out of there. So what I did is I took a screenshot so I could capture at a point in time in contradict to what I saw with this giveaway with Jake again. To try to, again, if they get on the show, I can challenge and question that. If they say that Jake didn't charge, Jake's not going to speak to me. But I happen to know from various tokens that I've spoken to that he does charge for his services. So, and they've marked this complete, which is me, assumes that it's already been done. And I question that this was truly a thing. So I probably won't get an answer. But I document it in the event that the Apollo team wants to come on the show and they want the smoke, then we can talk it out. And hopefully there's a clean answer. And it's probably just that they didn't update their document, which is why I want a PDF so that I can hold you accountable. So you don't make claims that just cannot be substantiated. The price movement for this guy has been reasonably strong. It has not had the same level of disruption over the recent period that many tokens have had. However, it's had challenges in the past and it seems to have pretty good overcome these challenges, partially because it has a constrained inventory, heavily constrained inventory. It's not growing nearly as fast as it once did, but it has a steady amount of growth. I would argue the volume is down from what I would expect it to be, given the fact that it's pretty much based around social media and creators and influencers. You would expect that, like many of these people we're talking about, have hundreds of thousands of followers. And so you would expect that their exposure alone would have given way more than what we see just by virtue of the so-called shill that some of them would have done. And I'm not seeing that reflected in the price movement. That's not to say it's not in a generally healthy state, but just to put it in perspective, it's, it's, it was close to all-time high a few days ago. It's all time high was about a month ago, but it's all time low was not that long ago. So it's like something went weird and volume seems to be the problem. It seems to not be that there's anything wrong, just that volume is tapering off. I can't tell from looking at it whether or not the volume taper is a symptom of people kind of being up on game. Here's my theory though. I suspect that people are going to corner market cap com and they're looking at the comments box and they're seeing a bunch of people calling it rug pull scam it's a pump and dump this is satama's other project which of course anything satama is not good <laughs> and allegedly he knock which really heavily 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 has shilled i'll call it uh satama in recent there's a loss of sentiment i think when there's a heavy amount of that i think that's playing i think that's playing factor into it people call it their uh, rug pull is the most common uh that's happening here uh people seem to think that it's not legitimate i can't say yay or nay because it's on the ethereum chain i'm not able to run my simple tool around it i would say that from what i can tell it appears to be predominantly based on the hype of social media and influencers and followers and and banking on the fact that they'll spread the word around those platforms to their various followers to grow the token project from everything I can see. I would have two main concerns. Number one, as I said before, either your white paper is a lie 
or Jake again did something out of the goodness of his heart, which I don't believe you if you told me that. So that's number one. That would be a concern. Um, the fact that you even went to him is a concern because I think what happened November 13th with Satama turned a lot of people off to him in general. So that also could play a factor. People saw that, okay, you're involved with that dude too. And he tanked that token. He might tank this one as well. So that's probably number one I see is this, what, what is his involvement with the project? And probably number two is potentially the, the fact that going after the so-called chillers, et cetera, I think there's a sentiment change and people are certain people are getting smarter about it and they're not, you know, they're no longer falling for that trap because it is somewhat of a trap to get in that because you just FOMO into it. I think they're getting smarter about it. This is my theory. I'm sharing my thoughts here. That could play a factor. The other factor is as far as being a rug pull by definition of said, I'm not sure that there's a rug pull. I don't know that I can say that it's at risk of it. Token Sniffer, which is a tool I've used on occasion, but not too frequently, but Token Sniffer seems to think it's a decent contract. Their concern is the liquidity is not locked. So is it possible that this dude could be rug pulled? They seem to think that the ownership's pronounced, which means that you couldn't directly yank the liquidity. However, as I mentioned before, you always could have a situation where there's a function that allows you to drain the liquidity, even if you're not the owner of the contract. So is it possible? Yes. Likelihood, there's just no real way to know. And I would say approach it with caution. If you do look at it, I encourage you to look at it and see if it makes sense for you. Just approach it with caution. Be tentative and smart about your investment. Don't YOLO into the dude. Please don't. <laughs> um, because I, it's hard to tell. It's hard to say. I, I'm not going to call them a scam. I can't. I don't have enough information to be in a position to call them an outright scam. From what I can tell, the contract is clean. From what I can tell, the functions are clean and the mechanics are clean. And it's really just a matter of this open liquidity being potentially a problem and the uncertainty that they could yank the liquidity. I don't think it's an issue of motivation, right? That they would be motivated to yank something from you. The growth is a bit sketchy just because it's growth is not normal for a standard token. Like the growth I would see would make sense for a rebase token. It wouldn't make sense for a standard non rebase token, but that could be a symptom of the, the, the population we're talking influencers and creators. And I can't say for a fact without significant analysis that the, the creators themselves are not pumping the price, like just doing buys, incremental buys to make it look like it's to the moon. Let's run go. Right. And then they shill it on social media. That could be a factor too. I can't say that it is or isn't. And I make no accusations. I'm saying it is possible that that could be happening. I do see in Dex tools that there's a number of buys that are recurrent buys from the same contract wallet with very few sales from those same. So that's also a possibility that might lend itself well to an issue. However, people who are signed up on Dex tools seem to trust the project and they seem to think it's a good thing. I can't necessarily say that is or isn't definitive because you could again have those same influencers who are just pitching it as a trustworthy project to get people to buy into this thing to show bags. Also, we don't know enough with this project about how it's going to pan out in the big picture long term. This one just launched. I want to say, what, January for this dude? It just launched. It hasn't been around for a long time. And one thing I've always advocated is I think it's important. Yeah, January. So I think it's important that we evaluate performance over time, first and foremost. I think the involvement with influencers is a concern from my perspective. I, I like their messaging and what they claim to want to do, but I'm a bit skeptical about their ability to execute the way that they're claiming. And I would like to see a different structure that does not favor those that beg for votes. If that makes any sense. Like when you have a project like this, where basically the only way you can get in is to sign up and then beg for votes from people. That, that's shill. That's like shilling. You're, you're shilling as a shiller to get a shill, to get a vote, to get this reward. I, I'm not a fan of it. I would rather see something that's randomized. You take whoever's in the pool, you rotate five, and you do rules that say you can only win once, once a year, and 
you just put a submit a content and let people vote fairly and freely, then it's not you having to shill it on social media. You as a creator are free, obviously, to say, hey, go vote for our project up over here. But it's not a requirement that you do so. You might just say, look, we'll just let the investor, existing investors do what they're going to do. Think about it. If I shill, let's say I were, I'm not, but let's say I were an inv- influencer and I got a million followers, right? Of my million followers, let's say a hundred of them bought into the project. What it seems like they're doing is they're banking on this notion that I could get the rest of the 999,000 to buy into the project because they support me so that they can get a return by me winning. Like that's what it feels like. And that I, I won't say unethical. That's the wrong word. It feels immoral. It feels like you're exploiting in a way people that would never buy into the project other than support your person. So I'm not telling you not to invest in this. I want to be clear. I'm not telling you it's a scam because I don't see scam. There are some red flags, but I don't see scam. I'll tell you that me personally, I wouldn't invest in it because even though I am a content creator, I'm not a fan of having to beg for votes. Number one, I'm never going to beg for votes. I'll ask, Hey, like share, subscribe, but that's a, that's not a beg. You either do it or you don't. And if you don't, it doesn't matter because people will still stumble across it. Right? So I'm not a fan of the begging for votes structure that they have. I like the constrained inventory. I have no problem with that. So I have no problem with the inventory at all. I love it. And the price movement seems decently strong, but I think, my guess on this one is it won't sustain long-term. That's my guess. My guess is that based on the volume I'm seeing that this is one where it had its day and people are starting to wake up to, you know what? This is just shilling. It's, it's shilling one one I think it's wrong to call it a rug pull yet because we, we can't know if there is or isn't a function that does. I looked at the contract. I don't see one. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything. They get creative with how they hide the functions. I don't see one and the contract looks clean. So I I would guess it's not a rug pull by definition. It feels more like there are certain people getting enriched. Possibly the the uh, devs are getting enriched because I'm sure they have wallets. Since it's Ethereum, I can't run it through market moves. because that's Binance. But I would figure that they probably have wallets and they're being enriched by the activity of people which is why they want more people to show the product so they can get further enriched. And then, oh, by the way, you can get enriched too if you buy into it. I'm cool with that. It's their token and I will never criticize it. But I'm a bit sketchy on the price movement, the buys and sells that I can't see for sure. You could theoretically have, this is my auditor hat coming on. You could theoretically have some of these influencers who are basically faking buys and sells. Not really faking, but they're they're creating artificial pump, right? Because they're going in and they're creating artificial activity to make it seem like this is hot and heavy and then shilling it to their followers to get them to buy into the thing. And listen, I probably pissed off whoever influencer creator, if they care, but at the end of the day, my podcast and my channel on YouTube, and I will share this token on YouTube because I think it's important that I put a stance (laughs) that I'm clear, crystal clear and transparent. That way you can hold me accountable and I expect you to. Personally, I would not buy into it. My my portfolio strategy is incompatible with what they're doing based on the data I see. Now, what would get me convinced to support it and buy into it? Number one, we need to resolve that statement in the white paper. If you have approached Jake again, what we know is that he charges for his service. He has charged for AMAs before. He charged Perignon, I believe, and he charged many other tokens. So if that's true, and I'm not him and I'm not in his books, but if he charges for his service, and that means he likely would have charged you for this. If he didn't charge you, I would find that sketchy because why would he pick and choose who he charges? That's showing favoritism. And if I were anybody else he charged, I'd be pissed. So that's, as a creator myself, I'm like, that's almost, it, it's immoral, right? <laughs> Let's say he didn't charge for this. So that's stance number one. Let's say he didn't. You chose not to charge for this, but you charge this other one over here, $15,000 or whatever you charged. That's it's moral. Why would you do that? And I would distrust it. If this was, again, I go back. If this was the stock market, 
that would be absolutely unacceptable and borderline illegal in some situations, depending on the circumstances. So there's that. But let's say that he did charge. Your white paper specifically says, and it's pretty adamant when you say it, that you don't charge, that you do not collect money for this. You don't do paid interviews or promotions. You straight say this. And you straight say that you're about community growth. You straight say that you're doing it around trust. So if it's true that he charged you and you paid him anything, whether it's a, now could be wordsmithing. Are you saying you didn't give him money out of pocket, but instead you dropped him tokens. If you gave him anything of value greater than say a dollar, you paid him something. If you paid him something, your white paper straight up lies, which means I can't trust the rest of your white paper, which means my trust is now eroded. And it goes back to the importance of why I like a PDF white paper so that I can hold these things accountable. And as an investor or potential investor, you should be doing the same exercise. You should analyze what they tell you versus performance versus the behavior. All three should be looked at to understand what are you telling me? And as long as it matches what they told you, you're good. If something's not clicking, you should make sure, hey, wait a minute, something's wrong here. What the hell's going on with my project? You're not telling me the truth here, dudes. And trust should be eroded. I had the same concern with Titano. And I covered that extensively on YouTube. Check that out if you want. But that's it's serious to me because as an investor, I can't trust you. Even if it's even if I can see that the dude should make me millions of dollars at some point. I can't trust you with my money if I can't trust information that you give me and you're not performing like you told me or you're contradicting the performance against your written information. I, why should I trust you with my money? Ethically, I don't want you to and be enriched by me. Like that's me. That's how I work. You have to determine your own strategy and your own beliefs because you may not care. You may just see dollar signs and go in it. That's fine. That is your strategy. I share it because it's what we do. I will share how I stand on things and go with it and be confident in it. So ApolloEmuToken.com, if you want to check that out, again, on the Ethereum chain, it is not on any exchanges, so you would need to buy it through Uniswap if you are interested in buying it. Take a look at that one. If you think it makes sense, by all means. I will gladly share this on social media via the YouTube channel. But this for the podcast listeners. I felt it was good to get back to an underdog token, and this one took me a little bit to just dig in. Do some analysis, make sure I was clear in what I was seeing, and I'm only going off what I'm seeing. And hopefully, if they're willing to, if they're willing to come on the show, I want to smoke. I would love to talk them, talk through some of this stuff, and hopefully lend some credibility to the project and maybe help them out. I'm not even going to charge you for that visit. That's how beautiful it should be. So 